Okay, so photography is a lot of stuff. You're like, well, all I care about is composition and lighting and art. That's fine. That's one aspect of photography. I enjoy going out and taking pictures. So, since nobody else makes videos like this, and it's neat to know stuff unless you like being stupid, this video is about <clears throat> light. Light and photography. The question remains then, <clears throat> ever seen a solar cell? Ever got one of those little solar power keychains? Uh, where do you think the energy comes from when we talk about a solar cell? Is light electrical? Mm, I see. Electromagnetism, light. Technically, light is a coaxial circuit. Longitudinal pulse perturbations, dielectric pulse perturbations with refractions and compressions. Transverse, whether circular or linear polarization in the case of light or EM. Electrical magnetic. Hmm. Seems light is electrical. That might have something to do with how the hell solar cells work, right? Solar panels. Yeah, solar, you heard solar energy. Oh my god, light's got electricity in it. Okay, so then the question becomes, what's the difference between uh, electrical and optical? Well, electrical engineering is one thing. Optics has to do with glass and lasers. Really? Okay. And electrical has to do with power lines and yeah, all that sort of stuff. Uh, oh, okay, really? Okay, so what's the difference between electrical and optical? The answer is there's no damn difference. A camera, a digital camera, if I could grab it over here, is no different uh, than a radio. You know how, and, and this is not an advanced uh, ham radio, kind of like I have in the back room there. There's no difference between optical and electrical. Your camera works off S and R. You know what exposure is? Exposure, of course, ISO is not connected to exposure. Exposure is applied gain. ISO, excuse me, ISO is applied gain when it comes to digital photography. Right? We have gain and time. Gain would be the aperture. Time would be the shutter speed. The other, or the true triangle of digital photography is S and R, signal to noise ratio. You know how you have a really efficient antenna? Yeah, that would be native gain on the sensor, like large photo sites, huge uh, micro lenses on the sensor. But the most important part is the efficiency of the lens and actually how it renders the image. Not only the nature of the bokeh of the lens, which has nothing to do with that's actually optical aberration, actually how it renders out of focus uh, elements, but the nature of how good the lens is at rendering the image. Micro contrast, intertonal detail. Once again, the question becomes if I take two sheets of white paper and I draw two stick figures, one on each uh, piece of white paper, and one sheet of paper, I put in some intertonal details. Okay, you ever know about Ansel Adams zone system? Zone one, zone two, zone three. Well, do you hold, do you do you think that's just like that's not in any picture? You take a piece of the take a look at this piece of wood right here, huh? Do you think that well, there's zone one, there's a what about the intertonal details? The intertonal details are low gain signals. That would be efficiency. <sighs> I don't know if you know anything about ham radios or radios, but if you have a really efficient antenna, you could tune in that really weak station that's like way the hell piss away, right? You ever been like out in the boondocks, out in the uh, uh, the Rednecksville, and like, oh my god, I can barely tune in that uh, radio station. You know, I'm getting further and further away from it. You have a better antenna, you can really tune it in. You have a Yagi antenna, I'm sorry if you don't know what a Yagi antenna is, you could point it in the direction and BAM! The signal blows up like five by five. Oh, yeah. You can really hear it. Your lens and your digital camera works no different than high efficiency antennas, and the signal to noise ratio is identical. Here's the question What's the difference between a radio signal and the light that comes into your damn camera? Seems that they're both <clears throat> part of the electromagnetic spectrum. A radio and a digital camera are fundamentally one and the same damn thing. So, once again, the question then becomes. What's the difference between an efficient antenna and a really efficient lens? If I take, now I have the really crappy 19 element uh, zoom lens over here on the left, and I have the super awesome Voigtlander 58mm Noctuan on the right. If you actually take a look, it's like, well, the shot over here on the left looks brighter. It looks like it was exposed more. Actually, the histogram shows that them to be identical. However, there's light loss due to 19 elements. So I actually had to go from 1 120th of a second to 1 1 160th of a second over here on this. But the histogram shows that both are identical. One pops off, uh, pops out of the page at you as realistic. If you actually zoom in, I've got other images here uh, where you can actually zoom in. These are just side by side. You can see this one looks a lot brighter. There's a lot less shading in there. Yeah. What's the difference between optical and electrical? There's no damn difference between optical and electrical. People that say stupid stuff like the prior video where I was telling you about someone that said, well, more glass in a lens doesn't render images flatter. BS. 
People have been talking about Zeiss Pop long before I was born, girlfriend. They calling it Pop, Lens Pop, Image Pop. Now, there are a lot of ways you can make an image pop. Lighting, perspective. You can actually uh, uh, increase, uh, excuse me, decrease the depth of field and make your image separate, your subject separate from the background, which makes it seem. Those are all ways to render depth in an image, right? Lighting, separation through depth of field, right? That's all a given. But one of the uh, ways to actually uh, uh, render depth in an image, and it can't be added in Photoshop, okay, is micro contrast. Those are the inner <laughs> Ansel Adams Zone System. If you don't know what Ansel Adams Zone System is, I don't know what the hell you know about photography. It's okay not to know stuff. It's another thing to love stupidity. What the hell do you think are the inner tonal details between each zone of, of Ansel Adams Zone System? Zone System, by the way, works in digital photography the same way it works in film photography. ETTR, exposed to the right. Why would you want to expose to the right? That means you're saturating the sensor as much as possible without overexposing. Oh, well, why the hell would you want to do that? Because you want to gain the weaker signals, which make up the micro contrast of the shot. Do you know how astrophotography works? Like, we'll sit there with the shutter proverbially open for minutes at a time. Sometimes the, the photograph really weak, like the Hubble, deep field view, the Hubble telescope. When it photographed the deepest part of the night sky where there was nothing, where basically there was nothing, I forget how many hours of an exposure there was, but then all of a sudden, bam, all this really low gain light showed thousands of galaxies. And everybody at NASA and around the world was like, oh shit, we looked at the blackest part of the sky where we thought there was nothing. And for shits and giggles, we ex to let the Hubble telescope take a multi-hour exposure. And then lo and behold, all the low gain, the intertonal, all the low gain light poured in, and then the final exposure showed something so fucking beautiful that they make posters out of it. It's called the Hubble uh, Deep Field View, isn't it? Where it shows hundreds of galaxies in the far, far distant reaches of the universe. People love that picture. When you expose to the right, it's doing the same thing in the center. You're actually exposing all the little intertonal details. When people say stupid stuff, like, more glass doesn't degrade, well, there's another question for you. You know, like when you're using your cell phone, this is not a cell phone, right? Using your cell phone indoors and you like go into some big ass concrete building full of steel and then your cell phone signal turns to crap. Yeah, why the hell does your cell phone signal turn to crap? That's like 1.2 gigahertz. Use your most uh, cell phone frequencies. They're all over the place. 3 gigahertz, 1.2 gigahertz. Why the hell did your cell phone signal drop? I was like, oh my God, I lost you. I'm in a big building. Why the hell did your cell phone signal drop, for Christ's sakes? Because all the steel and concrete in that building blocked the signal, the bi-directional signal between the cell phone tower. Well, this idiot right here who owns a photography website, you know, not too smart, said, well, more glass does not degrade the light or make images appear flat. If that's the case, then... <clears throat> then apparently everybody that loses a cell phone signal inside of a building because it's electromagnetic radiation, the same thing as light, the stuff that your this radio receives and the stuff that your cell phone receives and the light that your camera receives is all electromagnetism. There's no difference between electrical and optical. It's the same stuff. So why the hell's your cell phone signal drop? Because the S and R drop, the signal to noise ratio. It can't resolve it. Cell phone antennas, while much more efficient than they used to be, are really crappy. They're not like Yagi antennas. If you don't know what a Yagi is, then look it up. You can take a Yagi and point it at something, and you'll be like, the signal will be like, wham! Once you hit it, you point the antenna in the direction of the signal transmission. It really, like, it's like taking binoculars. You know how binoculars magnify something? A Yagi antenna does that to a radio signal. You know what? Lenses are the exact same way. A really fast lens, <clears throat> listen closely, versus like I say, a 5.6 speed lens, like an f1.2 is like a Yagi antenna. It's got a big front element and it's like going from a, you know, a little like blind, one of those little moles that burrow in the dirt, the little blind moles, they can't hardly see crap, versus like one of those nocturnal animals with those big gigantic ass bug eyes that can like, like it's totally dark, you can't see shit outside, but those animals are like, oh my god, they can spot an animal way over there and whoop, like an owl, huge ass eyes.
What do you think they're doing? Efficiency. Anyway, glass is an insulator. It's also a capacitor. That's a fact. It's an absolute mathematical fact. So when I hear people say stupid stuff, especially people that own photography websites, don't know what the hell they're talking about. Don't know nothing. It's okay not to know stuff, but don't start spewing your ignorance on other people and then like you're spreading ignorance. It's like someone spreading violence and hate. It's like, well, who the hell wants that? Like, you know, this is the truth. It's like, no, you're spreading hate and ignorance and violence. That's not good. It's okay to be stupid and want to know the truth. Some people are ignorant and don't want to. Like, I don't give a damn. Well, that's fine, too. If you want to, you know, sit there and pick your nose and, you know, uh, look at pornography on the Internet and live your life like that, you don't want to know the truth about anything, fine. I don't give a damn. It's okay to be ignorant, but you want to know the answers to stuff. You know, this is a mathematical fact. Energy equals nu V. Planck's constant times the frequency of light. Glass affects things. So, <laughs> here's your little lesson for the day. What's the difference between optical and electrical? What's the difference between optical and electrical? There's no damn difference. It's the same crap. <laughs> There's no difference between optical and electrical. None. No damn way. Zero. Anybody, you could actually ask, even though I hate the most modern scientists, which are not that smart, they're really full of themselves. If you find a smart one, they'll say, yeah, there's optical and electrical are the same thing. You know? What the hell do you think affects refractive index? What the hell did you think they stuck radioactive thorium in lenses back in the day? It's like, how are we going to stick some radioactive crap in, these, in the glass? It's like, why the hell are you doing that? Well, it changes the way light passes through it. Well, why does it do that? Well, the answer is it changes the dielectric permittivity of that particular glass. It's in the really, really, really stupid, dumbed-down version. They'd be like, what's the difference between flipping your eggs on a frying pan that's dry because they stick to the frying pan as opposed to, like, putting some cooking oil or some butter? He's like, well, I can slide, you know, the eggs, you know, wham, sit there and flip them. It lets the light slip through better. Yeah, that's a really, really dumbed-down way of explaining dielectric permittivity. Because glass is a capacitor. But if you change the refractive index, which is electrical, okay, you can make the glass thinner. When you make the glass thinner, then all the elements, if they're all oh, high index refractive, uh, high index of uh, high index glass in there, or ED glass, which is also high index refraction, then it causes the lenses to be lighter, more efficient. If you have to use a if you use a lens that's one third as thick and it's high index of refraction by changing the electrical... Why do you think Nikon sticks niobium oxide in their lenses? Why do you think Canon sticks lanthanum dioxide in their lenses? Why the hell do you think Zeiss, and Zeiss still does this, sticks lead in their glass? It's leaded glass. You can even look at Zeiss lenses, and if you have half a brain about glass, you're like, that's leaded glass. What's leaded glass? You ever seen like those little panda and unicorn figurines made by Swarovski? It's like, that glass is like shimmery. It like, looks different than like window glass. That's leaded glass. That's why people don't drink out of leaded glass goblets anymore. It's still not that dangerous, but you know how grandma had the leaded glass in the cabinet. It's like, that's for looking at, not for drinking out of. It's like, that's leaded glass. It's like, wow, it looks like a crystal. It's so pretty, the way the light shimmer. That's leaded glass. Zeiss lenses look the same as grandma's uh, Swarovski unicorn sitting up on the mantle. Because it's glass that's doped with lead. You know, lead, the stuff they make out of, make bullets out of? Lead. So, this is your lesson today in optical versus electrical, because there ain't no difference between optical and electrical, because everything in the universe is electrical, <laughs> including light, because EM, half of EM is electrical. It's electromagnetic, electromagnetic. Oh my God, half of that is electrical. Pretty sure that light is EM, therefore light is electrical. And if you pass light through six elements as opposed to 20 elements, something might happen. That's your answer. In short, I could talk about this subject for like a thousand more years, but you would go... <laughs> Boring. I hope you like this video. If you like it, you make a small donation. Tell me to jump off a cliff, whatever makes you happy. This has been another video by the ugly, tattooed, yet highly intelligent, angry photographer, which I'm not angry at all, actually.
the people I don't trust that are superficially nice, I don't trust those people at all because right under the surface, you know, they got skeletons in their closet and they're doing like uh, kinky crap. And it, you, I don't trust superficially nice people. <clears throat> so I'm not angry at all. I'm far more so a trustworthy person than someone who's superficially nice. There are people that are superficially nice and genuinely nice, but there are not many of them. As real world experiences will tell you and me, if you have many real world experiences, like, oh my God, how are you doing? It's like, ugh, they're too nice. There's something wrong with them. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>